Today we are joined by a band of mermaids that have built an eight-figure e-commerce business with no paid social. All right, everybody, today we have a very special guest, a new client of ours that we are stoked to introduce you today to. I am joined by Melise Miller from um, uh, Joe Lynn, who is the creative director, and then Jamie Collins, who oversees e-commerce operations and digital marketing. Thank you both for, for joining today. My pleasure. So we have, um, a lot of times, obviously, on the show, we're talking a lot about paid social, and we are we, you guys know that we believe that today is sort of this golden era and this moment in time where it's never been easier to create and drive traffic using paid social. But we are always fascinated when we encounter people who have gone out and done the good, noble work of building brands online without taking advantage yeah. of Facebook and Instagram to date. Um, and really, it's incredibly impressive when we see that. And what we know when we find those brands is that they have an incredible connection to their community, that they've found some real product market fit, and they've employed some definite hard work to get there. So I'm super excited today to sort of hear a little bit about that journey, but maybe, Melise, maybe you could start and just give us a little bit about who is JoLynn and uh, why did I refer to you as a band of mermaids? <laughs> um, well, JoLynn is an athletic swimwear brand. We also do activewear, which we call Dryland. Um, and really, I think what makes us different is we're we specialize in just like quality and um, functionality of high performance swim for training and also I incorporate a lot of like fashion and style and quirkiness and edginess within the prints and the colors and the designs and um, I think it honestly just started with like word of mouth and taking off with like everyone introducing it to their teammates and loving it and yeah no it was kind of cool because i feel like the original thought process behind jolin was based on athletes that weren't really happy with what they were wearing because mm, it was yeah if you kind of look back at like the way that the culture of swim is it's all really tight-knit community but it's not exactly known for embracing change like mm. the sport itself is pretty uh run-of-the-mill like what's been working in the past is what you wear in the future and like right. you don't see a lot of brands get reintroduced to that arena right. whereas in the world of like leisure swim or even surfing like that's what actually inspired our whole entire concept of like a two-piece being worn in the pool mm. was looking out at surfers you and know realizing like, that yeah and realizing hey they're you know doing these insane moves <laughs> on their boards and like why can't we be wearing that in the pool so um yeah so like our founder he was really inspired by that. He actually used to work in construction, like he wasn't in Crazy. the industry at all, yeah. and started kind of just doing as many different patterns and variations and testing them on his friends who were extremely high level athletes. Um, so that's, I think, what's really caused the brand to take off is that it was never really something that was where you're just trying to find the customer. It was more like we already are the customer, and yeah, so we wanted to sense. find something that we liked. Yeah, and that's super obvious. The, the Band of Mermaids joke is a line from their website where they talk about their About Us page. But what I loved about that page was, one, you both are on there, and yeah. every photo of the people that you have on there are in active doing what it is that they would love to do in yeah. your product. And yeah. so it continually reinforces that, that culture and the activity around your product. But um, Jamie, you and I were just reflecting on sort of our experience in early stage startups of okay. being customer service, being ops, being all these things. So give us a little bit about the founding story. You mentioned a little bit about your founder not being from the or from the industry but sort of give us that genesis story of how you guys started how long ago was that that sort of general overview yeah so it was back i think in like 2004 was it maybe lower seven, 2006 seven. Oh, i guess it was a little later yeah. it was a while back yeah was but like not um, yeah so warren was a lifeguard um and he was saying that he was kind of looking out again like i said just like over the waves and getting I feel like something could be better. And I think that the girl he was dating at the time um, was also complaining about her suits. And yeah. a lot of his friends are, at, like he was a professional um, lifeguard in Australia. So, or New awesome. Zealand, was it? Yeah, one of those. It was either New Zealand or Australia. Yeah, just on the other side of the On Pacific, the other side, yeah. out like, you know, and he just felt like that area wasn't being explored. Mm -hmm. There were, people were complaining, their suits weren't comfortable. Right. They were all looked the same. Right. Nothing was made in any kind of variety. And the fabrics, um, like as you know, chlorine is extremely harsh on suits. So you have to replace them quite often. Yep. 
And so he was thinking, like, okay, there's gotta be something better out there. And so he just started patterning. We started out with originally, I think it was four styles. So, um, and our bottoms also include drawstrings so that when they can stay on when you're Got out it. and doing whatever you need to do, like diving off the blocks, um, you know, swimming laps, water polo, some of the craziest like harshest conditions you could possibly be putting any kind of garment on. Cool. Um, and so he figured that he had something to bring to that. So um, it started out with, it was just like us three, I think. Yeah, it was like you, me, and yeah. then um, Tanya Gandhi, who uh, is one of the Crazy. like craziest, most badass water polo players. <laughs> um, so it really helped actually spread the brand because we had Tanya, who is amazing at sales. Yeah. Cool. And so when she would just like talk about it to everyone, like the the pool meet or just with her friends, like she loved the brand and yep. like everyone would like love to engage with her. And yep. then I think. Yeah, her she was a huge and, like, instigator with the brand's growth. Like she yeah. is, so, like, like boots. Yeah, boots, boots on the ground. ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah just exactly. in the communities that she existed in. Yeah, and, and it was kind of it. like by seeing somebody like her wearing it, you knew it one had to be good, mm. and you knew that she wouldn't. She was your friend. Like the people she's talking to. Yeah, they were all her teammates. They're people at the pool, or they're people looking up to her, um, training at the pool as well. So that was a huge like bump to our authenticity, yeah, you know, in that whole entire field. That's great. One of the things, so we, one of our strategists here, he loves this metaphor. He'll say that like, when you're thinking about driving traffic to your website, there's sort of two ways to do it. It's sort of similar to growing rice, right? Like if I want rice, I can go to the store and buy rice, or I could till up the soil and plant some rice. And over a long, long period of time, eventually I'll have a bunch of rice, right? And so paid social is sort of the, the metaphor for going to buy rice. And it seems like, and this is important to know, 11 years going and going through this to get to this point, you guys have done that hard work of really growing that rice. And it sounds like one of the things that was critical was influencers and sort of, I see a lot of that sort of being taken advantage, but even in micro communities, it sounds like. So maybe you could talk a little bit more about how you guys have pursued influencers like your friend Tanya um, in those communities and how you've sort of built those relationships. I feel like we, we honestly haven't, haven't really pursued them. They usually, will either already be wearing our stuff and then come to us to cool. like ask to be involved more. That's really cool. Um, yeah, and we've never, the, we've only recently, like, like in, in the, the last, last two months, two something? months started Crazy. an influencer program. That's yeah. Awesome. yeah. So, so you like, never would seed the product or anything. It was just interesting. No, yeah, I mean, really, it was. We just no. never had a. We never had a shortage we, of people that wanted to. I, we wear also it. did Crazy. up until I'd say two years ago. Everything was so guerrilla marketing. We had, we never spent money on. So yeah, what do you mean? So when you say guerrilla marketing, what do you mean specifically? Like, so what like, did you guys do to generate your first million dollars in sales? Like, what was that like? Just out there grinding at the pool? Grinding. Like, what? Grind, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of. Tr so um, yeah, we had a very small budget, so we had to be pretty resourceful, and so like a big model of our. Um, the way that we get our customers is through uh, trunk shows. Mm. So where people are going to the pool decks um, and then they sell, yeah. they're selling at meat. So that's kind of cool. where we're a little bit different. We've never had only until very recently a brick and mortar retail location. We were all e-commerce. So that kind of allowed us to be, and I think that was something that we were a little bit ahead of our time in. Like before, a lot of people would always be very surprised. Like yep. what, you yeah. don't have a brick and mortar store, you know? Yeah. Nope, we're just all online, you know, especially for something like swimwear, which where people want to try are, it, want to try it on. It. Yeah, and yeah. so um, because of that, I think we were able to build a really strong following because the people that were coming into contact with our brand were coming into contact with it through those people that we had selected as reps mm -hmm. who were a really strong voice of who we are as a company. So it created a super positive experience and like our repeat customers are so like, it's crazy when you look at some of the numbers cause it's you, all repeating customers. Like people keep coming yeah, back and back and back. Really high yeah, it's Yeah, and I think they just, uh, yeah, it's a lot of returning clients or customers, and like, yeah. I think also organically through social media, like Instagram, just with all of our demographic, like wanting to wear the suits and post themselves in their in the suits and hashtagging Joe Lynn. Interesting. Like I think we have thirty thousand ta under that tag, I believe, and we have like a lot of different tags as well. Mm -hmm. But that's just like natural. Everyone wants to show themselves. And, yeah. yeah. So so and let's talk, so let's talk about that from a creative standpoint. What is sort of it feels like in the swimwear community? There's sort of 
very two diverse worlds you could go down. The sort of speedo technical route versus sort of the fashion bikini line route. But you guys seem to blend those together well. So as a creative, like how do you think about that balance of function and style and how do you sort of plan those messages and think about combining them for your brand? I mean, um, yeah, we never want to lose sight of like our core, which is quality, performance, yeah, performance athletic. For, for women. Yep. Yeah, for women, yeah. for active women. <clears throat> uh, whatever sport they may play, or just like, or they just want to make sure their suit doesn't fall off. Right, yeah. right. Cannon, <laughs> cannonballing into the pool, yeah. I don't know. Like, yeah. um, so, a low par. <laughs> yeah. Just want to be covered, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, so then, yeah, that's, I mean, that's who we are. Mm -hmm. But like, just, I mean, me and Warren's, our brains are just like, we don't think in the way of like, just the boring prints and like the boring styles. We just like, we, we both also love style and fashion. So we're constantly like inspired by even like, you know, ready to wear cool fashion brands. Yeah, but then we're trying to cool. like translate it into like the sport world. Um, and I think a big focus for us is the idea of sport as play. Mm. Um, because if you look at like a lot of those messages of those bigger brands, it's a lot of very competitive, focused, aggressive mm. kind of messaging. And we were kind of recognizing that a lot of these athletes, they don't, their careers like after they are done swimming, maybe they're not trying to train for the Olympics anymore. Right, Maybe they're right. not like on the national team, but they're still athletes. They still want to practice and they, we wanted to make sure that there's room for them as individual people outside of their sport. So that's always in the, like our entire motto is like seeing sport as play and like inviting that kind of playfulness into the way that we design our suits and the way that you sort of show up to your pool deck. Like you get to express your personality. There's mixing and matching. That's You're cool. not just on a clone of teams and all this black, blue and navy kind of look. So that's kind of what gives us a lot of energy. That's great. So you mentioned a really high repeat purchase rate, which I'm sure leads to a high lifetime customer value, which is one of the key success points we talk a lot about. Another thing that I've noticed about your brand is you guys have incredible organic SEO around some keywords like a volleyball bikini and these other volleyball swimsuit, like some really powerful keywords in a space where there's really big players. Like what is, how does that happen? Was that intentional? Was that accidental? How have you guys gotten to a place where you have so much quality organic SEO? So we haven't really, again, I feel like a lot of it just has to do with, it's just happened. Like yeah. we were really, we're lucky in that a lot of the people that were buying from us they started to notice our brand, you know, and they would be searching and then we started popping up more and more. Only recently have we started working a little bit more on our SEO specifically, yeah. but it really is kind just of the a byproduct. Of, yeah. but, but I think what, what, what you say happenstance, but I don't want people to mistake that for like unintentional, whimsical luck. Yeah, yeah I think no. what it is, it's I mean, 11 it years. It's 11, so, yeah, yeah, I was gonna say, it's 11 yeah, years. I meant more of, in the sense of it was not a, it, it, it was very much us build, I mean, we like went through the whole process of rebuilding the website. We didn't just like turn on on and be like, oh yeah, it looks good, but I'm, yeah, maybe that sounded too no, I, overly simple, but um, it wasn't, I guess, in the sense of it's not this extremely sophisticated, you know, but I think, But I think that's also. actually like for us, a lot of people think about SEO as this game to play, right? It's yeah. about meta tags and titles and hacking your way to the top. And I think the reality is, and we see this more and more, if you want to think about making an impact in a much more sophisticated search environment, it really is about doing the good work of being real and valuable to the people in that community, right? Yeah. And, and in I think that that's sense, what you've we've done. definitely done a lot of that. Like we are very into, the, we have a lot of authentic content that right. I think really speaks to the people that we're marketing to. And so. I think like most all of us are athletes right. or like have been at some point and are, or, and if not like participating in a sport now, we're just like very active. And so it's like everyone that we work with is constantly trying on the suits and fitting them and like testing them. We have people go swim all the time or like go surf or like really testing them out. And so we have that direct feedback so that we can like make better suits yeah. for the that type of customer even our like um athletes that are volleyball athletes that we'll work with we'll like ask them for feedback on all of the things um that we send them and then i think also just like i mean maybe a lot of brands do this but um since we have such a direct communication to the customers there's not like the boutique in between us then i think we often will like 
get customer feedback mm. right away. Yeah. And also with our store, our flagship store, it's like we hear from the girls working there that like what people have liked or what's like maybe a lot of people looked at and put down and and then Interesting. like oh okay take that feedback and then like design immediately for that information That's and great. Yeah. often there's like i think such a big lag time from like design into like customer feedback when there is like the That's so good. We talk about that same thing with ads a lot of times we think about we love to, especially in remarketing, think about working with the customer service team to identify maybe your 10 most frequently asked questions, because what those represent is sort of friction to purchase, right? So if you can take some of those and alleviate them on the front end, so those feedback loops are, are super critical. Awesome, so what else? I mean, what else have you guys done to get to the place that you're at? Because it really is, I mean, we, of the brands, honestly, that we see that have gotten to your size, like you are in a super unique minority in the ways that you've gotten there. Um, so is there anything else that you think or would be valuable for somebody who's out there trying to start a brand that sort of would maybe be reflecting on and choosing between sort of paths of what to do next? Like what advice would you give to somebody based on your experience of where you've gotten? <laughs> I'm like, there's, there's so many things, I guess, going through my mind. I'm yeah. like, a lot of different areas, I guess, that I would give advice. Um, I think the biggest thing is kind of keeping your customer in mind and like, yeah. in that, which sounds so overly simple, but I think a lot of times it can be easy to sort of just focus on, um, you know, like, oh, we want to, we have this crazy idea. Like, let's just do this for no reason. And at the end of the day, you realize there's no one there to use right. it, you know, or something like that. Um, and like we've always we always consider ourselves like a very product focused brand, so that has really helped at least for me um, with ads and things like that to kind of understand that like are mm. you selling a lifestyle are you selling the product you know and so it feels really good to know that our product is what's driving our brand so at the end of the day we feel strongly we feel like it, we can back it up yeah um, so you're not have you don't you don't feel like you're um, using any gimmicks or anything like that. So I think that really allows you to be effective in your marketing because you're just, it's, you know, you feel like you're just talking to right, people, right. you know, it's, it's like the same, like I, I would still talk to people now mm -hmm. about Joe Lynn the exact same way as when I first was someone like wearing the suit, you know, calling the CEO saying, I want to work for you, you know, yeah. it's exactly the same kind of message. So I think that keeping that message really streamlined initially mm -hmm. um, is very useful for That's building great. out I your think marketing. I think too is like keeping the branding consistent mm -hmm. um, and even the design and look of it, but also showing this word is always used, but like right. your authentic, like your authentic selves, like the company core culture, like showing that through our like quirky, weird videos yep. and even like the voice of the brand, whether that's through like our new ads or like Instagram and actually like our newsletter, the girl that writes our newsletter is like hilarious, has, is yeah. hilarious yeah. just in general. And so like her quirkiness like comes out right. within yeah. the voice and it's like, and we are seen as fun because we are all like semi young and having fun within the company. So, yeah. and I, I think that's exactly it is if there's anything that, because what I find fascinating is that I had never heard of JoLynn, but I think that what that's perfectly indicative of is I'm not your customer. Yeah, I was gonna say. And you haven't gotten there through blasting mainstream in a way that I would have encountered you. Yeah. You've done an incredible job within the subset of people that you're there to serve. And so you've yeah. done an incredible job. And I think authenticity, whether it's overused or not, it's very applicable to what you all have done. Um, and it's incredibly impressive. And so I think the biggest takeaway for me and what I continue to see amongst brands that are winning is that if you genuinely actually care about the people who are using and buying your product, and oftentimes if you are them, you're gonna win because you're gonna be less concerned about the sale, the transaction that you're trying to create versus the experience people have with your product. And that's clear from these ladies. They've done an awesome job. Check them out, jolynclothing.com, um, and get yourself a swimsuit for the summer. Oh yeah. Thank you both for joining us. Yeah, oh my gosh, thank you. Have an awesome day. Thanks.